Pugsley, sit in the chair. Why? So we can play a game. What game? It's called... Is there a God? I'm a born-again believer who holds to the King James Bible. Uh, I recently spoke to you on the phone about an apparent contradiction between two verses in the book of Acts. Acts 9, the Bible says that... Uh, the men traveling with Paul heard a voice but saw no man. Then in Acts 22, 9, the Bible says, The men indeed saw the light but heard not the voice. Presumably, if this person is actually a real person that Reverend Kent Hovind claims um, wrote to him, that person started reading the King James Revision at the Christian Testament because Apparently, the first contradiction that he came to was in Luke or Acts or both. If you start with the Hebrew Testament, you will find hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of contradictions before you get to the Christian Testament. If you are interested in the subject, this is a good book. The Encyclopedia of Biblical Errancy. <clears throat> I do not recommend people squander their time, their precious life away, reading this because it doesn't matter if the Bible mutually contradicts itself in hundreds of places, which it does, because who the fuck cares? Everybody knows the Bible is wrong on so many fucking uh, issues, moral, ethical, science, you name it, the Bible is wrong. So, long list showing where it's wrong seems kind of pointless to me. Anyhow, a hell of a lot of mutually exclusive contradictions in the Bible in general and King James Revision in particular. What is Reverend Kent Hovind's explanation, mansplaining, when he believes that the Bible is utterly without error, how does he explain away mutually exclusive contradictions in his totally errorless Bible? Let's go see. Now, if I was God, here's another broad picture uh, way to look at this. That just cracks me up. If Reverend Hoven was God, instead of just telling God what to do and what to believe, if he was actually God... Would he pay his income taxes? Would he stop lying about geology, chemistry, biology, and uh, astrophysics and stuff like that? If Reverend Hoven was God. Let's see what Reverend Hoven says if he was God. If I was God, I would write the book. By the book, I'm going to assume he means the Bible. And if a God had written it, you would think the God would have gotten more things right in it. In such a way that those who don't want to believe in me anyway would think they found something. Aha, here's why I don't believe. And then they could, you know, go on with their own life because they don't want to believe God anyway. So I would put things in there that would appear without digging to be contradictions. I don't think that's deceptive. I think that's wise for the Heavenly Father to weed out those who are really serious. That's right. Reverend Kent Hovind's gods wanted to re weed out the smart people. Let us suppose that a non-Mormon Christian picks up the Book of Mormon and reads it. And nobody tells that person, hey, an angel wrote that crap. Would that person just say, hey, you know, this looks like an angel wrote it. If a non-religious person picks up any version of the Bible and reads it, would that person say, hey, a God wrote this? The answer is no. No sane human being would pick up a Bible and read it and say, by golly, a god wrote this. There's no way a human being, let alone uh, many thousands or at least a few hundred, wrote this. It must have been a god. No human being is going to pick up the Bible and say that after reading it. 
the contradictions, the vast, huge number of mutually exclusive contradictions in the Bible and the Book of Mormon does not mean that the gods are out there to deceive all the smart people. <sighs> does this really need to be said? See, I made a decision years ago. I'm going to believe the Bible until it's proven wrong. And even after that. I know others who have decided I'm not going to believe it until you prove everything is right. Okay, well, you do whatever you want to do. I have a free energy device, Reverend Ken Hoven. Give me $100 and I will give it to you. Do you see any problem with that proposition? Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it.